Oh. Hello YouTube, Sentinel H here, and welcome to our first episode of our Electrocraft tutorial series. Yes, I figured it was a decent time to start because we've been talking about Electrocraft a bit in uh, the Fusion Plant build. But anyway, this first episode is just designed to give you a basic primer and show you the absolute minimum of what you need in order to start using Electrocraft at a very basic level. Uh, in the next video we'll talk about um, one of the blocks that is really going to unlock the potential of Electrocraft, but in this first episode we're just going to go over the basics. So, uh, at a very the, the the basics of electric craft. First, electric craft does have some ore gen, although most of these ores are things that are probably already in. Um, if you're using a, a mod pack which has more than just rotary craft and electric craft, which you do need both in order to use electric craft, you need rotary craft. But electric craft will add its own version of copper ore, tin ore, silver ore, nickel ore, aluminum ore, and platinum ore. Okay, and of course the metals of each one of those. And uh, with those uh, metals and a lot of a couple of others, you can make wires. So we have at our disposal a steel wire, a tin wire, a nickel wire, an aluminum wire, copper wire, silver wire, gold wire, and platinum wire. Now there is another type of wire, but that's more advanced and uh, beyond the scope of this episode. But we'll talk about just these basic wires uh, for now. So in order to craft wires, it's actually very simple. Um, three uh, ingots of whatever metal you want to use, uh, arranged vertically in a crafting station, will give you 32 uninsulated wire of that metal. If you want insulated wire, you're going to have to add uh, six of any type of wool to the uh, any color wool to the left and right of that to get the insulated version. Now, as far as I can tell, there doesn't seem to be a way of chain of converting the uninsulated version into the insulated version. Uh, if there is a way, uh, I don't know it, and I'm sure Ricky will tell us. Um, so anyway, let's talk about these wires. Obviously, wires are how are the means by which you transport electric craft power. Um, so before we get into the actual specifics of uh, these wires and what these numbers are all about, um, first we'll talk about how to actually get electric craft power. So the main purpose of electric craft is to make it easier, well not really, but, but to give you a more um, powerful and flexible way to transport rotary craft shaft power. So in order to do that, you need to have these two machines right here, the induction generator and the induction motor. Uh, at the bare minimum, you need one of each of these in order to, uh, and then some wire in order to use Electrocraft. So to craft yourself an induction generator, you're going to need a generator, <laughs> it's kind of funny enough, which if you um, don't remember how to make this, it's a shaft core with two gold coils. Okay, A generator, a copper ingot of any type, a tin ingot of any type, a steel ingot, an HSLA steel ingot um, of rotary craft, and a nickel ingot of any type, an impeller, and three base panels. That will give you an induction generator. So it's not that expensive. It does take quite a bit of gold uh, to make a generator. To make the induction motor, you need a shaft core and two gold coils, which if you recall is the recipe for a generator. Um, two silver ingots, and two copper ingots, and again, these can be from any mod. And, well, I'm pretty sure. And two base panels. And what these do, uh, the induction generator, if I whack this with the angular transducer, it takes shaft power in from the back, you see where the green square uh, cube is, and it outputs electric craft uh, current from the front. Uh, you can put wires there. I'll just grab a wire to show you. Pop, and it connects to the generator. The induction motor is the exact opposite. It will take electric craft pow uh, power in from the back, and it will output shaft power from the front. Um, you can see where this uh, red cube is. Um, and it's also denoted by the, the shaft uh, that you can see uh, at the end here. Although there is a bit of a curious interaction. You can place induction motors on the ceiling. And if you turn it in a certain directions, <laughs> the model actually is facing the wrong way, but it still functions as you would expect with the uh, red cube. Bit weird, but it does work as, as intended. Okay, so um, just to recap, you put shaft power into an induction generator, and you put electric power into an induction motor. 
Alright? So, before we talk about these wires, we're gonna go over here, and we're gonna take a look at a basic, the basic power uh, conversion uh, calculations. So we have our induction generator, we have an electric meter, which we'll talk about later, but that's not necessary for the moment, just so we can tell how much voltage and current we've got. We have our induction motor uh, on the end here. So this would be, obviously this is not a useful setup because you're not really transporting the power, but this is a uh, lossless, so we can see what goes on. Um, so the first thing we'll do is we'll turn on one of these DC electric engines, and we're currently getting, you can see, uh, 1,024 kilowatts of power at 4 newton meters of torque and 256 radians per second. If we pop over here and we look at our uh, voltage readout, we currently have 2,048 volts. In electrocraft, voltage is a product of speed. And in order to calculate that, you just take your speed and you multiply it by 8. So the voltage in your system will always equal the amount of speed that is coming in times 8. So we go from 256 radians per second to 2048 volts. All right? However, we're currently not getting any current, and there's no power coming out the other end. And that's because current is a product of torque, and we currently don't have enough of it. So if I turn that on, now we have current coming in. One amp from 8 newton meters of torque. So in order to get your amperage, amperage is a product of torque, but it's the opposite calculation to voltage. Instead of multiplying your torque by 8, you divide it by 8. So the amount of current in, measured in amps will always equal the torque divided by 8. And that's why when we only had 4 newton meters of torque, we didn't have any current because we need at least 8. And now you can see we're getting power out the end. You'll also notice that the two power readings are exactly the same. There is no inherent power loss when converting from shaft power to electric craft power. Unlike other methods, such as converting it to railcraft steam or RF, where there is an inherent amount of power loss in the calculation, the only power loss that you'll suffer in electric craft is power loss based on the amount of wire that you use, and we'll talk about that right now. So just to recap really quickly, just remember the 8 to 1 ratio. Voltage equals speed times 8, and current measured in amps is torque divided by 8. Okay? So if you're working in electric cabs and you want to figure out how much voltage and current you need to get a desired amount of torque and speed, that's what you do. You divide the torque by 8, and you multiply the speed by 8. Now we'll go over and talk about these wires. So each one of these types of wires is rated to carry a certain amount of amps and has a certain amount of voltage loss per meter, which is, you know, per block. So steel wire is the worst. It can only carry 16 amps and it loses 64 volts per meter, which is huge. Tin wire can carry 64 amps, so four times the amperage, and loses only half as much voltage per meter, 32 volts per meter. Nickel wire can carry 256 amps and only loses 16 volts per meter. Aluminum wire can carry 1,024 amps and loses 8 volts per meter. Copper wire can carry 4,096 amps and only loses 2 volts per meter. Silver wire can carry 32,768 amps and only loses 1 volt per meter. Gold wire can carry twice as much amps. 65,536 amps and loses 4 volts per meter. And platinum wire can carry twice that in amps, which is 131,072 amps, but loses 16 volts per meter. So as you can see here, steel wire loses the most. Out of these basic metal wires, silver wire loses the least. And when you get into gold and platinum, they have much higher amp ratings, but they actually lose more volts per meter than silver wire. So if you can get your hands on it, silver wire is a very good wire to use because you're only losing a very small amount of voltage. Now there is a lossless wire which is superconducting wire, but we'll talk about that in a future video because it's much more complicated and beyond the scope of this simple introduction. 
Now we're going to take, come over here and we're going to take a look at a very simple setup using wires. So we have our industrial coil, which is standing in for a, uh, a source of shaft power. We have our induction generator attached to it, and we have a length of wire attached to an induction motor. So this is a very simple setup. It's probably not that useful. Uh, you could, if you were, if if you were just transferring power in a line like this, you would just use shafts. But it will demonstrate a couple of points. So if we turn on our coil, which we currently have set to 128 newton meters and 16 radians per second, which if you remember, if you divide 128 by 8, you get 16. So if we if we look back to our steel wire. We'll remember that it can only carry 16 amps, and that it's supposed to lose 64 volts per meter. So if we look at the first piece of wire that's uh, on the induction engine, induction generator, you can see that we currently have a point voltage of 128 volts and a current of 16 amps. So the 16 amps comes from our torque, and the voltage comes from our speed, which wasn't really that important in this demonstration. But we currently have 128 volts on this wire. On the next wire, we've got 64 volts, but we still have 16 amps. On the next wire, we're down to 0 volts, 16 amps, and another wire, we're at negative 64 volts, which shouldn't really, isn't really a, a, a thing, but uh, it just went down even further. Um, so as we can see, steel wire not very useful um, at, at this point. Um, because we're losing all of our voltage, but the amperage always stays the same. You don't lose amperage over distance, you lose volts, all right? Now, what happens, first we're going to take a look at why you should insulate wires. So we're going to spawn a sheep next to this uninsulated steel wire, push him into it, and he dies. So if you were in survival, instead of created, creative and you touch this wire, you would get a pretty nasty shock. So always insulate your wires, unless you're trying to use them as an electric fence, in which case, I guess, go ahead. <laughs> but always insulate your wires uh, for use uh, inside if you're going to get close to it, because that's you don't want that. Um, now, in order to demonstrate what happens if you put too many amps through a wire, uh, I'm going to line this in co cobblestone, I mean in stone, and you'll see why in a second. As soon as I knock the um, torque up, and I'm just going to torque this up to 130, which actually won't work because the uh, calculation doesn't work properly. If I knock this up to twice as many amps, the not only does the wire melt, but it actually spawns lava blocks. So this is even more dangerous than um, burning up your wires in, say, industrial craft, where the wire will uh, go away. Uh, in this case, you actually get lava, so um, be careful and don't do that. <laughs> make sure that you run the little calculations and make sure that you're using a, a wire that can carry that amount of amperage, because you don't want your wire to melt and spawn lava. So those are the basics. Uh, that's the basics of Electrocraft. Um, we've taken a look at the basic wires. Um, we've taken a look at the calculations involved in converting from shaft power to uh, electric craft power and back. And we've taken a look at um, voltage loss. So just to, uh, to show you here, we did, we did the steel wire and it really wasn't very useful. Let's use silver wire to connect this up. And we can see that we're only losing one volt per meter. And at the other end, the induction motor is turned. Now, let's briefly talk now, as we get to the end, about Electrocraft power and why you would want to use it. So, with rotary craft shaft power, when you're producing the shaft power, it'll always send that amount through to the end. So you have to do your calculations right and make sure that you're, in, and that you're uh, producing the same amount of shaft power that you want to use because there's no way to limit it except for splitting it off, but you can only split it off in certain ratios. With Electrocraft, the system will only draw power if there's somewhere to put it. Uh, motors always draw power, so that's why this is turning. But just to show you here, we'll quickly go into our creative mode and we'll grab a creative mode battery. We'll talk about batteries in a future episode. I replace this induction motor with this battery. This is silver wire. 
get a blue one. We can see that our induction motor is spinning and that our battery is outputting power. If we get rid of this induction motor, actually we'll put a voltage meter in the middle so that you can tell what's going on here. Come here, voltage meter, electric meter. You can see that there's voltage and current running through the system. If I get rid of this induction motor, you can see there's no voltage or current running. Because this will only output power if there's somewhere to put it. Which is the big benefit of electric craft. You don't have to worry about wasting power. Because you can't, unless you're putting too much power into something. If there's nowhere for the power to go, it doesn't just go out and get wasted. It, just, it won't output. Obviously, you'll, you'll waste the shaft power if you're not putting it, uh, if you're just producing this without doing anything with it. That's the big deal with electric craft. Um, you don't have to worry about wasting energy because it won't transfer unless there's somewhere to put it, unless something is requesting it. So I hope this has answered a lot of your questions. Electrocraft is not that complicated. Um, it's not that big of a mod, but it adds a very, very useful system. Um, all you have to remember are the basics. Remember the 8 to 1 ratio between um, torque and current and speed and voltage. And remember that it won't output power. Electrocraft power won't flow unless there's somewhere for it to go. So ask any questions that you might have in the comments. We'll talk about the rest of the stuff that you need to know in future episodes of this series. It won't be that long because there's not a ton of stuff to talk about, but it's important that you understand the basics because Electrocraft is really just a system um, and then a bunch of things that take make use of that system. So Electrocraft is really awesome. Definitely make use of it. It can really make it easier for you to send your shaft power uh, throughout your base to multiple um, machines. And we'll take a look at some setups for that in the future. Um, stay tuned for future episodes. I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out.